Hey, what's going on, guys? Good to be back and here to talk about Stargirl Episode 7. Now, this is the first part, guys, that we've had a two-part series. So, initially, it's just like one episode in a go. But it's now split into two parts, Shift Part 1 and, obviously, Shift Part 2. And the focus is primarily on Cindy Berman, serving as the origin story for the character. It's actually one of Stargirl's biggest comic book foes. She was introduced into this episode and we we all know her obviously as Cindy and it's really striking how dangerous this girl really is you know her father we find out is the Dragon King and, and Dragon King revealed that he's given her enhanced abilities and she's demanding that he allow her to join the ISA but obviously he refuses because he's not having any of that he doesn't want his daughter being a part of something really dangerous and he insists that she continues to monitor Henry Jr. Now, Brainwave's son, Henry Jr., he's starting to have a lot of fun with his powers. But in that way, in that respect, Cindy doesn't really fancy him. She's only doing it because the father's telling him to. And, we, and that's made apparent because we see her huff and puff every time she's trying to drag him out of the hospital room when he's trying to be with his father. And she's like, oh, can we go already? You know, we know that she doesn't care. But we find out from this episode that his powers are starting to kick in and the one thing about his powers is we always kind of heard we, we knew it was kicking in before because we heard the voices in his head but now he's hearing everything crystal clear and we get a situation where he's henry jr is slowly beginning to realize now that he can read minds before it was like what was that now he's actually sitting down in a exam room and in the exam room, he's listening to the voices of all the other kids around who can, who's telling him what the equations are of the exams. And he's realizing he can use it to his power. I kind of looked at it and was like, whoa, this guy's going to abuse this thing real quick. And he did, you know. What this paints a picture of, when you consider Cameron as well, which is Icicle's son, who actually asked Courtney to the homecoming dance. This was on the back of Courtney's friendship blooming with cindy not really blooming but they had to work together in the lab and you saw cindy actually know how to work chemicals and then she said to courtney well if you're stuck in a house and you, my dad forced me to do this and you kind of pick things up a little bit it just goes to show she knows her chemicals this girl is mega dangerous and uh, what we find out in her fight with courtney is that she has a healing factor she's got huge agility prowess as well and she's pretty dangerous. She's practically unbeatable for Courtney right now at this point. And that kind of picks up where Pat tries to train the new JSA. And Courtney's impatience leads her to sabotage the whole practice by just beating up all the, uh, the mannequins and the dummies that Pat has made to the exhaustion and the disappointment of the rest of her team. Because the whole thing is supposed to be about teamwork, right? Yeah, she goes in there, tries to do everything herself and proves to everybody that she just doesn't get it. And everyone walks off and just like, Courtney, if you don't understand that we have to work together, then we're going to get nowhere fast. She still, even after that, goes after Cindy herself and then ends up in a fight with Cindy where she just gets broken. And part of it in that fight is you hear Pat rushing in to the basketball court where Courtney's just knocked out. And he's shouting, Courtney, Courtney. Now, at that point, Cindy Shiv was running away because she heard Pat coming. She must have heard him call for Courtney. And if that's true, then she knows Courtney's identity. Now, it's funny because you've got a town full of supervillains and they have no idea who this new star girl is. We did hear them say that they're the new JSA are kids and yeah they'll have to be wary of them because they know now that the jsa is regrouping but then they also know that they're kids so it's almost like they, they're not worried but then they are worried because some people are onto them and they're concerned about their identities they're concerned about their plan which by the way the gambler had already sorted out launching the satellites and getting the codes and getting all that sorted out but one thing we also did pick up in this in this episode was the janitor the janitor justin's medieval memorabilia and artifacts along with his fighting ability showed that 
he could be the comic book superhero Shining Knight. He takes out a sword and he uses it to block Cindy Shiv's attack on Courtney. And for me, guys, that is definitely the Shining Knight from the DC Universe. So it might be good. We kind of knew he knew what was going on when you saw him in the background having a look at Courtney and having a look at the group. So that's that for me is what I think is going to happen with this. I think he's going to be the Shining Knight. And again, it's a, another good ad addition to the show. What we got a handle of was that Jordan offered Barbara the chance to handle all the important issues with the American Dream. And I'm really not sure what's going to happen with, with those characters. Barbara and obviously the younger brother, Sidney's younger stepbrother, he also came out and said to Courtney that, look, you and my dad getting too tight, that doesn't work. Yeah, something's going on with you two and I'm going to find out what it is. And that was really kind of throwing a spanner, an unnecessary spanner into the works that we didn't kind of really need. But what it does is it gives him something to shoot at. Because I said before this episode, I said they're going to have to do something with Barbara and they're going to have to do something with the little kid. Because they can't just, at some point, you know, you see Courtney and you see Pat in the house kind of giving each other little messages and <laughs> the mother and the stepson are looking at each other like is it me or is there something crazy going on they, they're they, they're on to them yeah and at some point someone's gonna find something out i don't know whether it's gonna be the little brother or i don't know whether it's gonna be barbara the mother i hope it isn't because she's just gonna try and shut everything down but at some point they have to do something in terms of writing about these characters in a way that makes them more interesting because her going to a new job has to have some kind of exposition and him just being the horrible little brother just isn't going to work you know we're seven episodes in they're going to have to give him some kind of narrative and i think that that's going to play out pretty much soon so that's why cameron asks courtney to the homecoming dance and she chose to leave cindy behind the new relationship that kind of didn't work which angers sydney sydney's just like i just made another friend and lost her and this was a real groundhog I hate life Sydney episode because it really showed her from the background of her life is so bad her stepmother she can control her father doesn't want her to join ISA her boyfriend isn't really a boyfriend there's just someone her dad's telling her to keep an eye on and she actually goes into the ISA's um, layer the injustices layer and she steals the suit and she steals the staff and that's where she has that fight with Courtney. And she looks badass, I'm not going to lie. But I think, moving on, I'm really interested to see what this episode 2 is going to have to unfold. Because Sydney has now become a very interesting character. And it's a character that I'm invested in. Because I want to see, is she someone that is going to actually turn good? Or is she going to be someone that's going to lead the team, uh, the new young team of Injustice? Which is the, the new brainwave in terms of Henry Jr., the new Icicle, which is Cameron, Artemis as well, which is Sportsmaster and Tigress's daughter. So I really want to know where this goes in, because if there is going to be a young, new injustice, what's going to happen to the old regime, to the old team? They're still alive and kicking, apart from Icicle trying to wipe them all out. They're still there. You know, Dragon King's there, Tigress is there. You know, the gamble is still there. There's still so many parts to this cog that is showing its rear head. And right now, the guys, the good guys have not a leg to stand on. I mean, the, the, the bad guys, the one thing that stood out to me in this episode is the bad guys overpowered them so much that the good guys don't have a chance. They're inexperienced, they're young, they have no clue how to get into a fight or do anything. And the Injustice are so experienced. They're, they're on another level. So I really want to see where this goes it's such a refreshing change guys to see a show which gives you that smallville type star girl is turning into a very surprising enjoyable show and it's exploring courtney's relationship with at school where with friends who she can be with with her team with pat dugan it's a real human connection like smallville that we can adapt to yeah the revelation that she's so genetically modified is really spoiling her it's making her the arch enemy of courtney that she had in the comics and that was kind of kind of something that was missing in the first six episodes 
and I'm really excited to see where this goes. And I'm excited to see that Cameron's got his act together to ask Courtney out. Does he swing to the good side? I, I, I think that we're going to see some, some semblance of that. I think one of these kids, whether it's Cindy, whether it's Henry Jr., whether it's Cameron, or whether it's even Artemis, because remember, Artemis joined Young Justice as well. One of these kids, guys, are going to end up joining the new JSA, and I can't wait to see which one it is. We also got another shot of Solomon Grande. Everybody walks past his door and tells him to shut up. It's just like a trope right now. And it's the joke of everybody just having in this series. Until that door gets opened, we ain't really going to know what's happened. But guys, really, that's it. Remember, still no date for the UK. Yeah, I do these re releases kind of a bit late-ish because the American version drops on a kind of a Monday night and I kind of do the reviews later on in the week because the UK still doesn't have this show yet but I'm, I'm really enjoying it guys Cindy's dragon breathing staff literally breathes fire you know I mean I know her, her dad is a dragon king but the staff is the real deal and you know Cindy doesn't wear a mask as well didn't you find that weird guys that Cindy didn't wear a mask so if she walks out, it's quite easy for anybody to identify her, which I find very strange. But guys, I'm going to leave it right there, and I'll speak to you guys in the next one. Peace out.